Well, we've played about 15 games in charge of West Bromwich Albion and it's now January transfer window time. So following on from our opening day victory against Charlton Athletic, we went away from home and beat the Premier League Tottenham Hotspur 5-0. Yes, we did. Mick Van Slimming got four goals, Roy Martin got one, Fosto Vera got sent off in the 89th minute. It was an even game, but uh, we were super clinical. We then went away from home against Brighton and won 3-0. Roy Martin, James Black and Ian Gerrard with the goals. 2-0 at home against Everton, Ian Gerrard and Roy Martin. 3-2 away from home against Leicester City, Alpha Dionglu with two and Ian Gerrard with one. A 4-3 away victory against Coventry, Mick Van Slimming with a hat-trick and Ryan Astley with a goal. 5-2 at home against Sheffield Wednesday, Roy Martin, Eddie Carlos, Mick Van Slimming and James Black with a brace. 2-1 away from home against Bolton, Jose Medeiros and Mick Van Slimming with the goals. Disappointing 0-0, home draw against Portsmouth, dull game, no goals. Same again, this time against Aston Villa. 1-0 away win, Mick Van Slimming with the only goal. 3-0 home win, Gordon Davidson an own goal and Mick Van Slimming. Away from home against West Ham was a one all draw, Roy Martin with the goal, an 88 minute equaliser by Barakat. We then got beat off Leeds United 1-0, the first defeat I think. In this run, Gordon Davidson with the own goal in the 40th minute. Our former club Huddersfield then knocked us out of the League Cup in the quarterfinals. Paul O'Neill with the only goal in the 9th minute. We then scraped through with a one all draw at home against Fulham. Roy Martin with an 88th minute equaliser. We then drew 2 all at home against Sheffield United. Roy Martin and Ian Gerrard with the goals for us. 88th minute equaliser by us again. And finally, we suffered a 1-0 away defeat against Bournemouth in the FA Cup third round. So, we started like a bat out of hell. Absolutely insane our start to life in charge of West Brom. We won our first, what's that, eight games on the bounce. We then drew a couple, won another couple. And in the past five or six games or so, we've definitely fell out of form. And uh, we're not doing particularly well. But... Based on all those results, we now sit in 6th place in the Championship. So we're already in the playoff spaces. 8 points outside of the automatic promotions. We've got January to go. We could make massive improvements to this squad. And hopefully be able to push on and at least challenge for the automatic promotion spots. So a couple of things have already happened straight away as the January transfer window opened. Fosto Vera, who was on 70 odd grand per week at us, has left to join Galatasaray on... <laughs> For 125k, I believe he's on 78k per week as well. There, that is a little bit crazy. So our try a wage budget is now well in balance. We are uh, out of the red in terms of that. We have got one side and coming in. Kokarda I showed you him last episode, a central midfielder, who my co coaches and assistant don't really rate, and I don't understand it. Two and a half star current, three star potential, decent player for most Skyber Championship sides. I just don't believe it. He will be starting in my first eleven. I have no doubt about it. 1.6 million and 8.5k per week is nothing too shabby. So, here we welcome him to the squad and hopefully he can be a good improvement for us. In terms of the finances and our transfer budget, the board actually increased my transfer budget to 28 million now. I have put a lot of that in the wages. I'll take some of it back. So, that gives us around 200k per week to play with and 20 million quid uh, to play with in terms of transfer. So, without even making any sales or any major sales, we can still be able to reshape the squad as to how we see fit. So I haven't spent a good time with the squad now. Managed plenty of games with them. Mick Van Slimming has been one of the best players that we've got. He's valued at 17 million. He's on 67k per week. He might end up leaving. I'll not lie to you. I mean, I know he scored four goals against Spurs. He scored he scored a hat trick in one of the games and braces in a number of games as well. But uh, yeah, he's on he's on the chopping block as is everybody who's on a high contract now. I don't think I'm going to be as ruthless as maybe you might imagine straight away. Uh, obviously, a lot of these players have been doing pretty well for us in the championship. And at a risk, I want to get promoted this season. Uh, when I initially took over West Brom, I was thinking maybe we spend a season in the championship, building up the finances, building up a squad that's made of really, really cheap players on low wages who are better, more than good enough to get us out of the championship. And then we go to the Premier League with a tiny wage budget, able to splash the cash on some major players with our increased reputation. But now sitting back and thinking about it, maybe, I, maybe I'm not so ruthless in terms of player sales, maybe only selling the players who actually attract bids from other clubs. The likes of Ian Gerrard are currently wanted by Burnley, Craig Thompson's wanted by, uh, well, Burnley, Spurs were also interested at one point as well. 
So if them sort of players get in offers, we can then see how much money we can get. But um, I think we'll only be selling players when we bring players in. And we do have a number of transfer bid and contracts offered already. I will show you them should they end up signing for the club. Uh, five of them there. I will end up dipping back on the market for some more as well. I am particularly interested in signing a left wing back. Uh, we've got no options there. Eddie Carlos is the only player who can play there. And uh, he's tired <laughs> a lot of the time. I can't really take him off. And looking to bolster our striker spots as we are playing three strikers. We need good strength and depth there. We currently have four decent strikers. Maybe one more should be able to see us through the rest of the season. Central midfielder with Corcardi. He doesn't even show up on this list. But I think we're pretty much sorted there. Without really having to... Uh, Look to buy anybody else unless other players leave. Centre-back's a massive concern. There's not a number of great options at centre-back, I'll not lie. We are in for one centre-back at the very least. I'll probably end up looking to bring in one or two more. And goalkeeper, we're absolutely fine as long as Thompson stays. If he leaves, we will then have to dip into the market. So financially, we're sitting on an overall balance of £47 million, projected to go down to about 30 uh, I, I really, really want to get this wage budget down. We're currently spending 925k per week. If we get that down to around 850, something like that, uh, whilst keeping the same sort of quality level in the squad, I would be more than happy with that. But we've only got a few games this January transfer window. Uh, we're obviously out of both domestic cup competitions, so that shouldn't mess with the fixtures too much. So we've got Bournemouth away, Everton away, QBR at home and Leicester at home. You know how the January transfer window works. We'll be playing through it. I'll show you the results and I'll show you any transfer business that pops up. So here is the first incoming. Edison Valdez, 20-year-old left wing back, 1.2 million quid. He will definitely improve our strength and depth in that position and he will uh, compete at that left wing back spot. I think he will become our best left wing back. He's not natural there, which is disappointing, but in terms of natural players on both wing backs, there's just not that many options available. Another new signing coming in, Robert Faulkner from Crystal Palace, our old backup goalkeeper for 1.3 million quid. English, 22 years old, bit of potential. Uh, he's going to come in and be our backup, which means we can now try and sell Goka Aketske. I believe his contract's run out no, at the end of next year, actually. So, uh, But he's on 25k per week, and if we can get anything close to his value, I'll be more than happy with that, just to get him off the wage bill. Uh, and get another English lad in who will set us up nicely for next season when we are struggling to register foreign players and the like. But there's West Ham coming in with a 325k offer. We'll accept that and hope he leaves. And there is Gorka, the goalkeeper, leaving to join West Ham for 325k and 25k per week off of our wage bill. Another new signing arrives, Nan Chen from Borussia Dortmund for £3.7 million, 18-year-old centre-back. And I think he's going to do a fantastic job for us as a ball-playing defender. Now, decisions, a bit of a problem. Eight, jump and reach, a bit of a problem at nine. But at 18 years old, he's got plenty of room to grow and we'll bring him in. He is only expecting squad player status. I will be starting this lad pretty much every game. So uh, we will see how he develops over the course of this season, whether he's capable of making the step up. But currently two and a half star, five star. I'm happy with that. So we've just took our revenge against Bournemouth after knocking us out of the FA Cup, beating them 2-1 away from home back in league action. James Black and Roy Martin with the goals. Next new signing coming through the door is Miguel Ramirez, probably my favourite signing so far. £1.3 million from Barcelona. His contract was expiring at the end of the season, so I could have potentially signed him on a free. But he wasn't interested in discussing terms when I was approaching to sign. Once I'd made the transfer offer... He was then willing to talk to me. So he's coming in, going to be one of our strikers, probably probably starting all the time. An honest personality. I think that's the first time I've managed someone with an honest personality. 19k per week means we can move one of the high-earning strikers on. I'll have to wait and see who that is, see who attracts some interest. But uh, happy to be able to bring him in. So three and a half star, four and a half star strikers, nothing to sneeze at. And uh, I'm hoping we get the best out of him. He will be playing in that false nine role. He does have some limited technical abilities, but his dribbling, finishing and first touch are fantastic alongside his technique. His mentals definitely need massively improved, but his physicals are great as well. Happy, happy with that. So I've been trying to sign uh, to sell Carlos Barbero. He doesn't get any game time for me as a winger. I have been retraining him as a left wing back, but obviously now with a signing of, uh, I can't even remember his name. 
the left wing back we signed. I'm not going to try and sell him on. We're not really getting any permanent offers for him, but uh, Livingston have come in up here. All of his wages and a future fee after matches played of 6.75 million. I want to suggest the terms they have withdrawn because I have said five games rather than 15. See, they're pretty sneaky, these AI. They weren't going to play in 15 games. So there might not be as many sales as I was certainly hoping. I think the problem is a lot of old players who I want to sell are on really high wages and they're not attracting any transfer bid so i've offered them out for loan i want 100 percent of the wages paid then we'll revisit it in the summer and try and raise funds there so leicester have come in 100k per month playing these wages for barbero and i think we're going to have to take deals like that when we can so we've just scraped through another game this time a 2-1 away win against everton moist keen put uh, everton in front 31 minutes in but ian gerrard and ryan astley got two goals in the second half to give us the win miguel ramirez Actually, was our best performing player on the pitch. Five key passes. That I'm very happy to see, considering he's passing of nine. <laughs> but uh, no goals for him, but a good performance. So trying to move on, James Garner. I haven't had much luck whilst excluding wage selling team contributions. Brentford have come in with 4.3, as have Sheffield United. But I do have to contribute 20k per week in terms of his wages. That does save us 40k, as he is currently sitting on a 67k care per week budget i'm not planning on playing them anymore so i think i'm going to accept both the sheffield united and brentford offer and then we'll be able to get 4.3 million pounds through and i'm very happy to see this message sinan sayan um is an absolutely unbelievable player currently valued at 1.2 million he's handed in a transfer request and if we can potentially get him in that will be absolutely the 125 million that probably rules us out but uh i'm still going to be peppering in small offers to see if we can drive that price down so there's Carlos Barbero going to join Leicester for the rest of the season on loan. Get his wage bill off. Hopefully he has a good season at Leicester City and then we can look to sell him on in the summer transfer window. So Spurs did end up coming in for our first choice goalkeeper Craig Thompson. We have agreed a deal at £18.75 million. He's on £54,000 per week. He's good and he probably will be decent in the Premier League. But if we are to be promoted he will be a player I will be looking to replace. So why not sell him now and we'll look to get a replacement in now for cheap and save all that money on his wages and bring in a hefty transfer fee. I think I'm going to do it. We will accept the offer. He is English, but we've got a lot of English players currently in the squad. It just means now we are on the lookout for a first choice keeper. In our next game in league action, we've just absolutely demolished QPR 5-0. Miguel Ramirez getting his first goal and his second goal for the club with a brace in today's game. Roy Martin, Diongu and Ian Gerrard completing the scoring. So there is James gone out of the club, 4.3 million quid and about 43k saved on the wages. We will take that all dear and uh, the plan is coming into action. And there is Craig Thompson leaving now, our first choice goalkeeper going to join Spurs for 18.75 million pounds. I'm sad to see him go because he was a good goalkeeper but uh, for that sort of money and saving that amount of wages I think we would have been daft to have held on to him. And here is our replacement joining us. Klaus Schaber will join us for £2.9 million. He's on 30k per week, which is a little bit more than I wanted to pay, but it still saves us a good 24k per week compared to Craig Thompson. He's a very, very good goalkeeper. I'll just get Craig Thompson will compare. As you can see, they compare pretty favourably with Klaus being in the blue and Craig being in the green. Now, Craig's better shot stop and better distribution. But other than that... Klaus seems to have him in every other category. Physical, speed, mental, communication, eccentricity, mental and aerial. So uh, if we go to the attributes here, you can see it's pretty pretty even between the two goalkeepers. So I don't think we've downgraded it. We haven't upgraded it either. I think it's a bit of a side grade. But we're saving all that money and brought in that transfer fee. Looks like we're going to be moving on Lee Newton as well. He's a player that doesn't get any game time for me. Worth 1.3 million quid. He's on uh, 15k per week, so Everton have come in with a £1.3 million offer. We will accept that. And uh, another little bit of money and a little bit more money saved. In our final game in January, we have a disappointing one all draw against Leicester City. Andy Mabry had put us in front 33 minutes in, but Diego Marigali got a goal for Leicester in the 59th minute to equalise. This is probably a bad deal. Miguel Cuesta is a striker for us, £12.75 million he's worth. He's on 52k per week. We've got a £5 million offer with 13k per week. I'm doing it. I want the wage bill down as much as we can before the end of this window. So uh, even if that's not the best of deals in terms of transfer fees and stuff. He's 29 years old, man. I just want rid of him. 
So the board are looking to block the QSTA deal from going through because we aren't getting enough money. Do you think 7.5 million pounds should be the minimum? <sighs> should I, should I talk to them? Let's talk to them. I think the board should reconsider since we joined. Yep. So they're not going to block the deal. It is going to go up through. I, I do agree with them. We are selling them for too little. But um, I'm not going to use them for the rest of this season. His value will drop. Maybe it might increase once if we are to get promoted and our uh, reputation increases naturally. But I'm just not bothered. Let's get rid of him. He has left. And uh, Lee Newton is going to join Aberdeen as well. So a couple of more sales. A couple of more bits and bobs coming into our transfer budget. Um, Ian White is attracting a lot of offers. Now, if I was managing West Brom for the long term, I'd be like, let's keep this boy in. Let's get him in the first team. Never mind out else. But... Uh, I wouldn't be bothered if they ended up accepting like a 3.7 million pound offer or something for him because I'm never going to see him actually uh, reach his potential and come to fruition. And the transfer window has now closed. That is the deals done. Any sales that we're going to make have been completed. And uh, let's take a look and see what that does in terms of finances. I have adjusted the wage budget to increase our transfer budget so it would leave us with 42 million pounds in the coffers and 86k per week available in the wages so even if we are to go up bearing in mind with crystal palace we had a 47 million pound transfer budget we're already pretty much there with the money that we currently have if we go up you would hope the board would then you know pump in a couple of bit <laughs> a little bit more maybe 20 extra million give us the likes of 60 million pounds to spend with a bit of an extra wage budget as well We've got our wage budget down to 772k per week. Uh, it was over a million when I joined the club. So that is a big, big change in the few months that we've been there. About 250k knocked off the wage bill. Uh, and that is per week. So you imagine that over the course of a season. We'll probably save them five, six, seven million quid over the course of the rest of this season. Which takes me to the projections. We've currently got 50 million pound in the balance. 33.86 million pound is the projected balance at the end of the season. So... Let's take a look at the league and see what the likelihood is of us being promoted. We currently sit in fourth. We are five points behind Leeds United in second and six points behind Fulham in first. I think we're, we're going to be pretty confident that we'll be at least in the conversation for automatic promotion within the next 12 games. I don't see a reason why not. The form that we've been in since we've took over has been fantastic. And uh, even though there's been a couple of disappointing results in there, we will continue to improve as the team gets more familiar with the tactic. And I'm just, I think I'm delighted with how this season so far is going with West Brom. So let's just imagine we do get promoted. I'm thinking maybe a £60 million budget with uh, maybe, uh, maybe 150, 200k available in the wages would do us nicely and should set us up nicely for next season. And that also, uh, we've still got a load of high earners that we could end up selling in the summer. The likes of Mick Van Slimming, Ian Gerrard, Victor Ambrose, Dionku, all on 40k pluses. And, uh, but we have managed to trim the squad down pretty nicely in terms of wages and I'm happy and content with the business that we've done. But anyway boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But till next time, take it easy.